the thought there as it relates to back to uh, an upside down umbrella in talking about zone coverage and using that comparison. If it was a quarterback who's, and this was back in, you know, um, during the quarantine, I, um, the, the fastest way to clear a room at my house was to um, put YouTube on the TV and play videos of, or TVs, TV copies of, um, you know, John Elway's drive um, versus the Cleveland Browns or to listen to Pat Summerall and John Madden, um, um, 49ers uh, versus uh, the Dallas Cowboys when the Cowboys were kind of take control of the league. I mean, I watched these games and or I watched the Buffalo Bills, see Marv Levy up, walking up and down or um, Coach Flores walk up and down, listen to the old announcers that I grew up with. The kids were were out. So I had 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 downstairs with myself. But anyways, in watching those things, like the the drop back passing game, the read passing, the big drop all the way to the top, or at the top of a long five step drop. Okay. The only guy at that point when a quarterback has done that, okay, so let's right away I think of Dan Marino. I think of John Elway, right? We grew up Jim Kelly, we did those guys right there. Jim Kelly was a little bit more quick with him passing, but the rest up top. Right, the thought there is to force the ball down. And this is a time, this is a um, kind of an idea that has really uh, almost um, been chased out of the game. It probably only lives in two minute defense now um, with the advent of um, RPOs and everything else that you're seeing. But back in, back the, in those days, and, and the, the theory here still stands that force the ball down versus retype passing. Retype passing would be, I'm reading one, to two, right, to three, check down, force the ball down. The only guy with a clock in his head is the quarterback, right? Don't make an easy decision for him. If there is a shallow coming with a dig behind, don't, don't jump on the shallow, right, and open up the dig, okay? Don't give the quarterback a quick decision, right? The clock is running in his head. Make him hold the ball, right? Uh, make him panic before you panic. Okay, and I would say the same in 3-4 run defense is true. Okay, with the spacing of our people, five man, five men potentially on a line scrimmage. Okay, and the spacing of the four eyes and the zero nose, right? With the running back, his ability to hit the front side A, his ability to bend it back in the C gap off the four eye, right, is predicated upon the linebackers and D linemen and how quickly they take their primary gaps. So as opposed to this with a D lineman, right? Or as opposed to this as a linebacker, what we want to see with a D lineman is to fight the hard shoulder of the block, right? So if I'm, a, if I'm an O lineman and I'm here, right? This is the hard shoulder. They're trying to turn you, right? And reduce the surface. And so it would be this, fighting the hard shoulder, getting square, right? This would be the equivalent of a zone drop, right? Getting to 12 yards, squaring up, seeing the QB. The QB is now the running back, okay? Fighting the hard shoulder, right? When the, when the ball were to cross, right? And it's no longer working, um, it's no longer working to this A-gap, let's say. Let's say it bends back, okay? I work from my primary. The ball crosses out of my vision of a four eye. I work to my secondary. If I'm a linebacker, I work to stack the nose, primary gap to secondary gap. It would be the equivalent of an underneath defender with the hand coming off, stealing second off the pitcher. Okay, so those three, four principles, right? There, there has to be a, a dedication to those because there's going to be times, as we know, that we're going to be outnumbered in the run game um, and the ability to use our front to squeeze gaps, take away gaps, um, set edges, right, and allow the front seven to play trying to keep our safeties in a position to where we can play the play action pass, we can play the RPO that's off this certain run, I think is critical. I think the less we spend time on those front techniques, the more your secondary is involved, okay? And it gets to the point where if they're involved, then, you know, who's, who's behind them? And you get into issues when that's the case, okay? Versus, um, the, that would be zone coverage. If it's four, three fronts, right? Now we're talking about one man, one gap spacing, 
right? And the if the quarterback is not a runner, we can aggressively take those gaps. And that would be equivalent to man coverage where we're matched up man to man. I'm seeing his hip, right? He chops, I chop, right? I cut, I cut off angles as an inside backer, right? If, if we were to get any form of quarterback as a runner, now there has to be an element, we feel, of a two-gap presence of the linebackers falling back. Okay, and so I think starting there, the 3-4, right, versus 4-3 and the differences are important.